You are the best person to make your own mental health treatment decisions. Not other commenters on YouTube, not your friends, your partner, your parents, or even your doctor. Now you should work with your psychiatrist or other healthcare professional if you have one to understand all the options, but you should still be the one deciding. After practicing psychiatry for 25 years, I've noticed a few patterns that upset me. If you're trying to make treatment decisions for yourself, there's so much noise. It's hard to figure out what information and whose opinions you should listen to and whose you should ignore. And if you tend to be anxious, indecisive, or unsure of yourself, you're more likely to give in to other people's suggestions than doing what you believe is best for you. I know because I see this happen all the time. One challenge is that many friends, family, and romantic partners have strong opinions about whether a person should be in therapy or not, whether they should take medication, and even which medications they should and shouldn't take. I've noticed that some of them can be very outspoken about what they think and have a lot of influence on the person considering treatment. Many of these people are well-intended in trying to be helpful, but sometimes they're not and they just want to control the person. The other challenge is social media. I think this is especially true when it comes to YouTube comments. If you're on YouTube researching the pros and cons of a particular medication or other type of treatment, then you'll likely see many comments expressing both positive and negative experiences. One of the problems with the negative comments is that people who have had negative experiences are much more likely to leave negative comments than the people who have had positive experiences are to leave positive comments. I mean, it's the same idea that works in any business. Unsatisfied customers are much more likely to tell many people about their bad experiences than satisfied customers are about their positive experiences. So the problem is you get a really skewed view of how poorly tolerated or even potentially dangerous a particular treatment might be. I'm not suggesting that people who leave negative comments are exaggerating their experiences. I'm just saying they're more likely to be seeking out videos where they can leave comments about their negative experiences. I mean, think about it. If you're doing well on a medication, there's not much incentive to go look for videos about it and then comment about how great it worked for you. I've got a quick example. The other day I got a negative comment on one of my medication videos. My comment filter caught the comment and it was never published, but the comment was very long and started out saying that they were sick and tired of evil doctors promoting medications that can kill people. And based on what the commenter said, this was obviously a drive-by comment by someone who did not watch the video and just wanted to dump their negative agenda. And if you watch my medication videos, you know clearly that I do not promote any medications. I do my best to make helpful content for people in an easy to understand manner. I tell you the pros and cons. I don't make money from drug companies. In fact, I haven't even made money on YouTube yet. I've devoted hundreds of hours over the past year to making videos, but I have nothing to promote, okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you may not have considered this, but as a physician with a YouTube channel, I feel an added sense of responsibility to not allow medical misinformation or disinformation on my channel. And it's a fine line because I do believe people are entitled to their opinions and they should be able to express them even if they are negative. But if their comments are abusive, involve name calling, or are sensational and inaccurate, then I don't allow them. I would feel bad if I knew that somebody avoided a treatment that may have helped them because of an inaccurate negative comment on one of my videos. So here's what I want you to remember when others in your life have strong opinions about what you should or shouldn't do in terms of treatment. It's also what I want you to remember when you read negative comments on social media about particular treatments. Most of the people whose opinions you are hearing are basing their opinions on their own personal experiences and beliefs and maybe the experiences of someone they know. And as humans, we naturally tend to pay more attention to the experiences we and those we know well have had, and those experiences are valid. We sh there's nothing wrong with paying attention to those experiences. We should. But, and this is the most important takeaway, the opinions you're hearing others express are based on a very limited amount of data. It's usually based on the experiences of one or two people. So I wanna share my vantage point with you. This is a discussion I have with patients all the time because they'll often say that they know someone who did well on a particular medication and they wonder if that might, medication might work well for them. Likewise, they might say that so-and-so had side effects from a particular medication and they therefore assume that they won't tolerate that medication either. So this is what I tell my patients. 
After 25 years of practice and treating thousands of patients, I can tell you failure and success stories for every medication. I'll see someone in the morning who is doing much better on a particular medication, and then that same afternoon, I might have to take someone else off that same medication because it's not working for them or it's causing side effects. I see this happen all the time. I just have a different vantage point of a much bigger picture, I think, because I've treated so many patients with different treatments. Each person is different. So unless we're talking about close family members where the same medication might work for different people in the same family, you shouldn't base your own treatment plan on someone else's experience or opinion. Here's what I would suggest instead. If you have supportive people that you trust, especially if they've had mental health treatment themselves, then by all means use them as a sounding board. Don't ignore their experiences. It's all potentially useful information. Just don't over rely on it. Likewise, when you read comments online about negative treatment experiences, you don't need to ignore them either, but keep it all in context. You're reading through comments where you're much more likely to see negatives than positives. Then talk to your prescriber about any concerns or questions that you have. They're much more likely to be able to give you a balanced view about it all. Finally, if there are people in your life who are trying to tell you what to do, and your intuition knows that you shouldn't listen to them, then don't. Your mental health treatment is too important to hand over to them. Please, trust yourself. You matter.